darkness right and uh, and then 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 some people misunderstand the meditation and because of because of lot of interest in churches and many other religions they are trying to introduce meditation and they are creating meditation uh but those are not really helping them to understand themselves those are again doing something else with their with their with the human mind so th- those are the bad part of that mm-hmm. but meditation is really what meditation is it's helping you to find yourself not anything else and basically finding who you are not something else well, and i thought it was interesting too when you were talking about even starting w- with your breathing in the united states we have an expression saying oh i have to catch my breath meaning that you know we're going so fast that we sometimes are are outpacing ourselves and mm-hmm. so i think that's a very interesting kind of juxta- juxtaposition about to say that's if right. you're to that point where you're having to catch your breath you're not focusing on your breathing cuz right. you shouldn't have to catch it <laughs> that's right exactly and the other thing we most of the time we are seeking and we are finding excuses and we say we don't have time we have busy life but really no matter how many things you have we have to you have to breathe and you don't give uh, give breaks to your breath you have to breathe how come we can do everything by mindfully so with the sitting meditation helping you to have your life back and it's not really slowing you down it's really giving you time and giving you right time and it's helping you to use your time in a perfect way really avoiding mistakes and maintaining yourself and uh, maintaining calm all those things coming with meditation so people really who value themselves they are really encouraging to find time for meditation and finding finding opportunities and in the past i had tried to do a meditation uh, experiment with my class and just let them try on their own in their own time to find some time just to sit and they had to do some research online and find some um a little bit more about meditation and then try to go a half an hour mm-hmm. where they were just being quiet and trying to meditate and and I got a lot of students who said oh my mind was just racing with everything else I should have been doing during that time or I couldn't stop myself from thinking what might you say to those students who struggle with that then, and then they are not meditating they are trying to do something meditation with with, with that point meditating means you are observing you are not doing anything so when they have busy mind or when they have a lot of thoughts they realize okay i'm having these thoughts you should be very friendly with yourself and watch basically observe rather than reacting so then gradually you can you can form new habit so the you need time and also i'm really not encouraging anybody to practice meditation by themselves at the beginning because like a simple example if somebody learn uh walk in a wrong way at the beginning as a child that person will continue that in the entire lifetime then you should have your parents or somebody to help you to and teach you how to do this even though the way how you eat you need somebody to teach you somebody who know should teach you how to do that mm-hmm. this is kind of habit you are training to your mind then if you if you practice meditation by yourself you, you might sit down and you might have a still posture but with your mind you might do something else that also will lead you to pleasure again because we our mind always encouraging us to find some kind of pleasure so i'm really encouraging somebody to practice meditation even at, even at least at the beginning with a teacher so that way you can introduce right techniques and could and you can maintain it later and could you just describe a little bit about what one of your sessions might look like or feel like and how you you lead a session uh okay yeah usually with our sessions uh, we are practicing meditation half an hour and uh 
there are there are two uh, stages of this half an hour meditation, which is uh, uh, first five minutes I'm helping them to calm them, themselves and settling their posture with meditation posture and settling their uh, body with meditation posture. Then uh, another twenty minutes we are practicing uh, either few techniques we are using and mainly we are using breathing meditation. Uh, then I'm guiding them how to watch and observe your breath. Um, so um, that's how our meditation part goes. Then after that we discuss some kind of topics. Sometimes they ask uh, some practical questions. Sometimes they ask how to cultivate themselves. Or sometimes I'm I'm bringing some stories and helping them to uh, them with some teachings which can use with their practice and their life. That how our that how our class goes. So with but with retreats or with longer time meditation periods, I am introducing them to sitting meditation and walking meditation, which is very interesting. The walking. But here in Chattanooga, you don't do the walking. We do, we do walking meditation with our retreats here. In okay, but just during the retreats. Yeah. Okay. And is that, um, because I'm not very familiar with that, is that more of a labyrinth then, or no. it can, it's, okay. Uh, we, just, uh, we just select a path to walk and uh, everybody doing this, in, this individually. Okay. And, uh, first I'm guiding them to do how to do that, then they do that. Okay. Can I go back to one of the things you said was you might talk about a story? Um, are there a lot of stories in the Buddhist teachings and what purpose? Well, actually, I'm not really bringing these stories from uh, Buddhist stories. Um, just a practical stories from my life and okay. what I heard. And then we are, we are using a practical stories to learn something. Maybe sometime I'm bringing some stories from uh, Buddha's life also. Maybe some monk's life from the, um, and what they did and all those things. But uh, uh, these are not really religious stories. Maybe more like a personal experience yes. that you're retelling. Okay. Yes. And is there anything else that you would like to say to students who've maybe never meditated or who maybe have misconceptions about what it is? Well, yes, and I would say um, in these days, these days, I'm really happy with 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 the students because we are really a lot of students are really open, and basically, when you stuck in somewhere. You think you are very open, but once when you come out from those boxes, then you see how much you are open right now. These days, fortunately, a lot of young people, a lot of students, they are really open. They don't want to stop themselves somewhere. And for those, it's better to think what are they doing and why am I doing something? Why am I believing this? Because I would like to encourage them to not to believe anything just experience something. By believing it, you are really depending on something what you don't know. If you know something, then you know it. If you don't know something, just realize I don't know it. Then better to find those out. If you think, well, I should know this area, then you should expose yourself towards those um, ways. And uh, I would like to encourage them to watch a DVD but I, uh, or movie that I uh, saw two or three years ago, the name is What the Bleep Do We Know? Hmm. And that documentary really talking about human mind and very interesting documentary and I would really encourage young crowd to watch that uh, documentary, What the Bleep Do We Know? All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it and, and I know it's going to benefit my students. So, um, oh. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you so much.